you say? I would have made Ken House come for Rick. I think we need to start making Ken House come for the boss when he's not here. All right, if I can have everyone's attention, we'll go ahead and get started with our uh, winning team press conference following the Pocono 400. Here at Pocono Raceway, we are joined by Crew Chief Steve Latart um, with the number 88 National Guard Chevrolet team. Steve, this is the second victory of 2014 for Dale Jr. This is also the second victory, um, actually multiple wins for Dale Jr. since 2004. Talk a little bit about your strategy this season. <laughs> um, your going away season, a lot of things going on with the team this year. Uh, just talk a little bit about what it means uh, to be sitting here at Pocono today with two wins this season with him. Well, I mean, it means the world to win races. That's why we all got into racing in the first place. Um, you know, we talk a lot about the chase and points and, um, you know, all of those different things, and they're very important. But, you know, when you start as a little kid in racing, you learn that you want to win. That's why you do it. <clears throat> you know, racing is a very difficult sport. Uh, 500 seasons don't really uh, exist like they do in stick and ball sports. So wins are usually uh, fewer and farther between than in other sports. So uh, you really appreciate them when they come. And today was a great day. We had a good car. Most of the day, I don't think we had the best car, but we were very efficient on pit road. I thought we had a pretty efficient pit strategy. Dale drove a great race, made very few mistakes. And then uh, I think we had a little luck on our, our side at the end, but you have to put yourself in position to have that luck fall your way. So we've had some races fall the opposite that we thought we could have won, and uh, this one probably fell our way from second, and we'll take it. This is also your second Pocono win. Your first came with Jeff Gordon here in June of 2007. Talk a little bit about that um, and uh, what it means here at Pocono. Well, yeah, the first one was uh, a rain shortened race that uh, kind of we got a little lucky on that one too. We had a good car, but it, it really fell our way that day. So um, this is a good race for a crew chief to you know kind of hang your hat on. There's a lot of strategy that goes into this. It's a very difficult racetrack to pass on and to get the advantage on pit road because everyone has the same idea. And um, with about 30 to go, we were actually very pleased with our position. We thought we had the best fuel and in second position, which was a good, good strategy for us. And then the caution started coming out, which made it a little more stressful. But in the end, it worked out our way. Okay, we'll take questions now. We'll start over here to our right with Mike. Mike Embry, USA Today. S Steve, obviously a piece of paper played a big role in, in, in today's outcome. W what are the dynamics of that at a track like this? Is it... Is it inevitable that that that, in, that Brad's engine would blow in three, five, seven laps, or, or how do you look at that? Well, I think for Brad's engine, you have to probably call Doug Yates to get their opinion on it. Um, yeah, we have that information on what's too hot, how long we feel it will run there, what the calculated risk is at running at that temperature. Uh, you can look at the paper; it was definitely hurting his motor, but happen, helping a ton on the downforce. So it definitely was a big advantage as far as downforce goes to be the leader with paper on the grill. We had that at Daytona for the 500. Um, so it was probably helping the handling, hurting the straightaways. And then they have to manage it as they see fit. And, you know, it says a lot about a race team that can manage that and talk about it and make a decision that ultimately perhaps cost them the race if we weren't able to go by them the other way. And I think it says a lot about Paul. I respect him tremendously in the garage. I think he manages the race very well and um, stays calm under pressure. And I think you saw that again today. In the end, you have to make it 400 miles. It's not a 395-mile race. And earlier in the race, we had paper on our grill and had to fall back. Luckily, the timing of that was about lap five or six of the race, so it didn't really affect the outcome. But um, it's a lot like the concrete last week. And when you have tire issues at places or you, whatever it may be, there's adversity thrown at everyone. And that's what makes racing one of the cool, true reality TVs left in the world is no one has any idea how it's really going to end up. Questions? Okay, we'll go here with Jim. Jim Otter, Charlotte Observer. Um, in one of his interviews after the uh, race, Dale Jr. said, I'm having the best time of my life. I think the rest of the crew could say the same. Uh, is that an accurate assessment? And is there something he, more to it? There has to be something more to it than just winning two races, isn't it? Well, I mean, you have to ask Dale, I guess, why he made that statement. You know, I can't really speak for him. I know the ra race team. We're having a blast. We're having fun. We go to the racetrack um, expecting good results because of the momentum and the hard work and the race cars we've brought, you know, and, and that's a good problem to have, to have high expectations. You know, you have to be very careful. Uh, they can become fragile very quick, and you have to manage them when they don't come your way. Uh, finishing 43rd at Texas is a perfect example of, you know, you learn a lot more about your race team f finishing 43rd at Texas than you ever will at winning Pocono. Um, it's easy emotionally to win races. It's difficult to lose them. So um, 
you know, I think we're having success. We're, we're running well. We're winning races, and we enjoy each other's company. I don't think we have any really internal issues within the race team. When you take a group of guys, 10 or 15 guys, and travel all over the country 38, 40, 42 times a year. I mean, just this week, we raced wherever we were at, Dover, left Monday night for Loudoun, spent two days in Loudoun, went home for the joke was when I got to the airport on Thursday, as two of my guys looked at me and said, hey, well, good to see you. It's been 15 hours. I was getting worried about you. So, I mean, that's, that's how much time we spend together. So to see some uh, results for all that hard work really makes it worth it. And I'm having a blast as well, so I'm glad he is. We got two questions over here to the left. Go ahead. Uh, Brandon Caldwell, the Racing Experts.com. Can you explain how Dale has changed as a driver since you took over as crew chief? Obviously, this is his first multi win season in 10 years. Can you explain how he's changed? Well, you know, I, I worked very hard at not forming an opinion on what Dale Jr. was before I became his crew chief. That was one of my um, goals. Is when Rick told me, I rode up to his house and we sat down, we started talking. I kind of, even though I knew we knew each other to say hello, we obviously worked at the same company, we kind of reintroduced one another and started laying out the groundwork on what we thought we needed to do to run well. And and I think, you know, he's a tremendous talent behind the wheel with a tremendous amount of desire to run well. And then you have to throw the world's expectations on him that no one in this room nor myself could measure or believe we understand. And I don't try to understand it. So maybe that's why him and I are such good friends because I might be the only one in the world that doesn't wonder what it's like to be Dale Jr. Because, I mean, it's he's, he's the normal guy. He's a great guy. He's a great talent. Um, I don't try to pretend I have any idea what it's like to be him. I, I can't really fathom the idea. I mean, but uh, he handles it with grace. And much like winning, you know, he handles it even more grace when, when it's not going well. And I think that says a lot about him. And then when you get to win races with him and see him put on that genuine smile and have a good time, and it's a blast. Okay, go ahead with your question. Holly Golombeski, Drafting the Circuit. Steve, you guys are really in a groove this year, and you do have a lot of momentum. How hard is it going to be leaving this team at the end of 2014? Well, you guys only get to see the great stuff, which is you know a win at Daytona and a win here. But Saturday of Kansas, my little girl had her first communion, and I was in Kansas. So when moments like that happen, it reaffirms why I made my decision. And I love my job. I've loved my job for 20 years. I love the people I work with. I consider Dale and some guys on this team my best friends in the world. I mean, the best man in my wedding is on my race team. You know, this is my life. This is how I was raised. But I chose, you know, nine years ago, 10 years ago, 11 years ago now to have a family. And when I made that decision, that was not a casual decision. That was a decision for the next forever, you know. And I feel that as much as I love my job, they have to come first. And Six and a half days a week, I think I'm really going to love my job, and there's my new job, and there's four hours on Sunday. I have no idea how I'm going to replace it yet, so I'm going to have to find a, a hobby, I think. Okay, we'll take our next question in the back from Dustin. Dustin Long, MRN.com. <laughs> um, Steve, a, a couple things. What, what kind of a threshold is it to win multiple win, to get multiple victories mm -hmm. in a season? And, and second, why – now do you guys do you feel like you guys are winning can can win multiple races because you've had some better you've had some good seasons and and had good streaks but couldn't get those wins so why are they happening now and 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 why is it and what kind of a threshold is it to get the to get multiple wins in a season you know i i don't know if it can be measured um racing is a very finicky sport and it's it's the difference between first and fourth is almost immeasurable in most of these races it's it's a moment in time during 400 miles that that a talented crew chief might see or a talented driver, but the normal fan or even the media has no idea that that was the change of the outcome of the race. You know, they, they happen all the time. And I don't mean the big monumental ones. You know, it's the very simple ones that we, as, as experts, you know, the crew chiefs and drivers in the sport, we see them. And, and sometimes you get done with the race and you didn't see it. And, and you have to go back and review it and try to be better. So to answer that question is next to impossible because – you know, your, your success on the racetrack has so much to do with everyone else's input, not your own, not your race team. Um, if the four car has a better day today, I don't know if we outrun them on the racetrack. So we don't do anything different. We run the same race, make the same calls, drive the same laps, and run second to the four car. You know, those are the opportunities. I would say if we had, you know, an Aquafina bottle of more fuel at Las Vegas, Brad Keselowski doesn't win there. So... It's so hard to measure how you win multiple races, and how you do it is you have consistent speed 
consistent opportunity, and you have to kind of play the odds that if you deserve to win races long enough, surely some have to fall your way. And I think that's what happened today. And you see it the same with Jimmy Johnson. I know it feels great to share a building with Chad Canales and seeing their success and to know that our building has won the last three races says a lot about our group of guys. Um, we've been testing last week. with the 48 testing next week at Chicago. You know, we've been doing a lot. So I'm proud of that group. And I think they have as much to do with us breaking through to a multi-win season as anybody. Additional questions for Steve? All right, Steve, thank you very much. You're